Hey guys, what's up? I'm Jen Rosenbaum, breast cancer survivor and author of What the F Just Happened? Survivor's Guide to Life After Breast Cancer, which you can find on Amazon. Um, so it is about a week post-surgery for me. I had surgery last week. It was my third reconstruction surgery. Yes, my third. Um, just to give you a little bit of a timeline, I was diagnosed with invasive lobular carcinoma in 2017. I had a bilateral mastectomy, went through eight rounds of chemotherapy, and then had three reconstructions, one March of 2018, one November 2019, and my third, this is uh, July 2020. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about the multiple surgeries and if you guys want to see why I've had the other surgeries I've made videos of those as time has gone on um, but just to kind of bring it all together and talk about this surgery and talk a little bit about why it's important to feel comfortable with your reconstruction um, I, I think that that would that's really what we're going to talk about today if you want to know um, how I chose my surgeons or, or questions I asked that is in my previous video you can check that out um, this one is more hindsight is 2020 <laughs> kind of a video so let me explain my first surgery um, I went from expanders to implants and the implants were put under the muscle uh, they looked ridiculous they look like hamburger buns I had like a shelf it, we made it really hard to um, buy clothes and wear clothing. My implants were too wide. They were too flat, too low. They just didn't look good. And my doctor kept saying to me, it's good enough, it's good enough, it's good enough. And I believed him for a really long time. I believed him that it was good enough. Um, every time I saw him, I said, what do you think about a fat grafting? You know, maybe fill in the top a little bit. He said, no, I don't believe in fat grafting. It's good enough, it's good enough. And finally one day I got brave enough to see another doctor. And I know that that seems ridiculous because it is um, it is hard to um, sometimes go against a doctor who's who in theory has done you right, who's put you back together. And then to say, you know what, I just don't think that you're right, I'm going to question you is sometimes difficult because they're the experts, right? Um, so I decided to question him, saw another doctor, doctor was like, nope, this is not right, they're too low, they're too far, they're too flat, they're, they're all the bad things, let's move you over the muscle, let's do a fat grafting, a different um, profile implant and see how that looks. So I did that surgery in November 2019. And at first it looked good, um, but the problem is, and by the way, I'm sorry if you're hearing some background noises, we're still in the pandemic here and my kids are here and you know, I don't know, I can only control how much noise they make after so many months. Um, so we did that surgery and um, it looked good at first, but over time, the fat got reabsorbed back into my body and the implants really started falling. And what I understand now is that I didn't have the proper structure underneath by the fold of the breast. So my um, breasts were by my elbows, I mean really low, and I'm only 45. I don't wanna look like I'm 95, <laughs> so, or I'm not 45 yet, 44. Um, but I really wanted to make sure my breasts were in the right place. The top was very, very hollow. I had a very severe mastectomy. Um, so I had a lot of rippling, my implants were but not very dense at all so it contributed to a lot of rippling even if I wasn't bent over you could see all the ripples and I just wasn't happy and you know here's the thing about that the reason why um, I bring this up is because so many people would say to me well they look good to me and yeah they did look good to other people because I figured out how to like wear a certain bra and, and wear a shirt that covered it or um, make it look decent but it didn't and it was good enough um, but I didn't realize actually how much it was affecting me mentally until this third surgery. Now I'm only a week out from my third surgery, although I have so much more faith in this plastic surgeon than my last two. Uh, and I do believe I am going to, this is going to hopefully be my last surgery. Um, the thing about it is that, well, let me explain. So let me back up for a second. So what he did was he removed those implants. He gave me a more dense implant and he made sure that he built um, with Alloderm a new um, structural system so that my implants won't fall. Now my implants are definitely harder than they were before, so they're not very natural feeling, but I don't really care how they feel. I care much more about how they look. But if I tell you that they are inches, not centimeters, inches higher than they were before, they're in a much better position. It's lengthened my torso. I finally have a torso again. Um, they're very uh, comfortable where they are. And when I took the bandages off, um, I saw him the day after my surgery, When I and I am definitely gonna cry when I tell you this, I can feel it coming already. 
But when I um, took the bandages off, I saw cleavage for the first time in three years. Now, if you're a breast cancer survivor, you'll understand. If you're not, you're gonna be like, what's the big deal, cleavage or no cleavage? You're alive. I don't know how to explain really in words what it felt like to look in the mirror and see somebody that I recognized for the first time in three years. It was the best gift anybody could have given to me. It was, um, I looked quote unquote normal <laughs> for the first time in a long time. And I, I knew I missed it. I knew that having breasts that were um, deformed and unusual and um, ripply and uneven and, and all that, I knew that, that that bothered me, but I just didn't realize how much it bothered me until they looked better. And I, the reason I haven't made a video before today was because it was almost too emotional for me to talk about in a good way. Um, I think that I feel like a different person. I feel empowered. I feel human. Um, it's very hard for me. I still think about it every day because I still have some pain. I'm only a week out. I still have pain. I still have a lot of bruising. I'm still wearing this like crazy support bra. You guys can see. I still I'll show you. I still have bruising and and stitches and all of that. So I'm still in it. I'm still recovering. But I said to my doctor when I saw him the other day, I just, I said exactly what I just told you that, you know, thank you. Thank you for making me feel normal again. You know, thank you for, um, making me feel feminine and whole and human. And he said to me something so interesting. He said, breast reconstruction isn't about the body totally. I mean, it is, but it's not totally about the body. It's about the mind. And it's really about making sure that you don't have to think about your breasts every minute of every day. You don't have to think about what am I going to wear and how am I going to hide this and, and does it look okay? And, and, you know, for those who don't understand, who just think, you know, oh, breast cancer is a boob job. It's so far from it. I just say this all the time. It's so far from it. And, uh, <laughs> can you hear the kids playing? Um, I mean, I put on a t-shirt and I saw something that looked like breasts <laughs> for the first time in so long. It was so, it just felt so good. And I realize now how many times my breasts really got in the way or my lack of breasts um, got in the way of certain things that I wanted to do. I'm not saying that that's okay. I'm not saying that you should experience that. I'm not saying that putting implants in is going to solve your problems. What I'm saying is that even if it was just for that brief moment of looking in the mirror and seeing the old Jen, it was like, it, it took me back and I... I just went, oh, there she is. She's still there. She's there. Now, my body, my mind, my soul, my brain has changed so much since diagnosed with cancer. You, there's no way that you can't be a changed person after all of this, and I'm grateful for that. But it doesn't mean at moments I don't want to see somebody that I recognize, just to remember that she's still there. It's kind of like when you have a baby, right? And you're like, I'm a different person, and did I lose my mojo? And then eventually you, you know, you see, you come into yourself and you're like, oh, right, I still exist. <laughs> I remember now. I see it with my photography clients all the time. Um, it's, it's extremely emotional on a good, on a good emotional scale. Um, and I'm just really grateful. And here's the thing, if these implants don't work, if they fall, if I have a problem, I don't think that they will, but if I have a problem, just seeing myself like that for that brief moment even made me realize that it it's really not about the breasts. Isn't that ironic that just seeing it really made me realize it's not about the breasts. It's really about the mentality. It's really about knowing that I am still there. Um, but not, you know, looking good and looking better and feeling better and not having the distraction of always trying to think like, oh my God, is are my scars showing? Or <sighs> It was nice to live without it for a few minutes and I hope I continue to do so. I hope as I heal that it, that continues. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm, I'm rambling a little bit. I, I swear I'm off painkillers. <laughs> but um, 
I think that those of you who have been through this know what I'm talking about. And those of you that are going through it, that are still in the process of reconstruction, I just really want to assure to you that it is not selfish to want to look good. It is not selfish to have more than one surgery. It's not crazy to have more than one surgery. Like I said in my last video, most people do. Most people, if I wish I had known, I wish somebody would have told me this is going to take more than one surgery and that's normal and that's okay. Um, it's okay to not settle. It's okay also to not be perfect. I don't expect to be to be perfect, to have perfect breasts. But I do, I do want to feel familiar, like I'm living in a familiar body. I do want to feel secure and beautiful and familiar. And listen, I realize not everybody chooses to reconstruct and um, that's okay too and that's a personal decision and it's not to say that if you don't reconstruct and you live flat that you won't experience wholeness or that if you do reconstruct you will i can't guarantee you will experience wholeness i can only offer you that that experience that i had of that first moment of just seeing myself and saying you know what that was there i am i recognize that person and um this is a journey this is a journey i'm three years out um, today is July, today's July 16th, so in a few weeks I'll be celebrating my third year mastectomy anniversary, and when I say celebrate, yes, I mean it. I always try to celebrate the day every single year because it's a really hard day, and I talk about in the book, you know, making new memories for the day. I, it's a tough day, so I, I try to do fun things and celebrate. Um, so it's three years and I thought looking ahead, man, three years, I'll be fine in three years and I'm still working on it. I'm still going through the process and it's, it's okay. This is not a sprint. It is a marathon and, um, it's one day at a time. Um, yeah, I have some, some video ideas that I'm going to work on between now and then to share some things with you on my mastectomy anniversary, but, um, I really just want to say thank you to all of you who've reached out, who have um, asked me how my surgery was. For those of you who want to see what it looks like, I am going to share it. In fact, if you go to my Instagram page, you can start seeing pictures already of uh, what you know what it looks like. I did not have drains this time, which was amazing. Drains are the worst, the worst part of this whole process. Worse than chemo, worse than <laughs> drains. Ugh, terrible. Um, not having them made the healing much faster for me. Uh, I am still, like I said, I'm only a week out. I am still wearing a support bra and I did have a fat grafting from my stomach. So I'm still wearing support there, um, which is, it's sore and slightly uncomfortable, but, uh, it's par for the course and, um, I'm bruised and I'm tired. <laughs> the recovery is a little exhausting for sure, especially with the kids home and, you know, trying to take care of them. But, um, I feel really good. I feel really good. I think that uh, there's been a new energy in, instilled in me with this surgery where I thought that this might be the one that broke me, <laughs> that I was just done and this is like my my last straw. This has actually been the one that's recharged me um, between the most amazing surgeon that I have now and um, somebody really hearing me and understanding my thoughts and understanding what it's like to live life after cancer. I've been recharged. And you guys are a big part of that too. Just reaching out and being a part of this and watching the videos and sharing them. So I want to thank you. Um, you know, if you guys want my book, you can get it right now on Kindle. It'll be published in September, paperback. But also if you're a breast cancer survivor and you want a free copy of the book, please reach out. Um, I don't have a link just yet for it, but I will soon. And so I'll post it here when I have it. So actually, if you're watching this video on July 16th. I don't have it yet, but I will have it shortly, so check out below. Um, I really appreciate you guys, and if I can support you in any way through your trials and tribulations, um, I'm here for that. We are a community, and we will get through this together, and um, like I said, this video was a little rambly, but it's sort of just a mishmash of thoughts that I've been having since my surgery. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I hope that this makes sense. I do think if you're going through the journey that it will make sense to you. And ladies, if you're unhappy with what you look like and you're not sure how much it's really affecting your life, trust me, it is. Um, don't be afraid to get another opinion. Don't be afraid to ask, to reach out to a doctor, to ask me for my doctor's information. I'm so happy to give it to you. I'd recommend him to anybody. Um, but don't be afraid to advocate for yourself what you feel like 
and your self-love and your self-worth and your self-image is so vitally important uh, right now. It always has been, but it's even more important post-cancer to put your life back together. So don't underestimate that. This isn't just about boobs, you guys. This is about mentality. It's about your brain. It's about loving yourself. It's about so many other things besides just breasts. Don't let people convince you that you're selfish, that you want to look good, or I've even gotten, you know, why would you want to risk another surgery? What if something happens to you? What if what happens to me is that I feel like the most amazing version of me after this? And right now I do. So I just want to give you that little glimpse of hope. All right, you guys. Many blessings. I will be back a whole bunch between now and my mastectomy anniversary uh, to fill you in, keep you updated, show you some things, and um, share some photos. So I hope you have a great day. Stay healthy. And um, if you need anything, you know that I'm here.